Recently, something extraordinary was witnessed in the sky over Israel. A strange sight captured everyone's attention, sparking speculation and curiosity. According to biblical teachings, Jesus Christ will return to earth victoriously. His second coming is described as personal, visible, and glorious. The recent events, including the drying up of the Euphrates River, ongoing wars in the Middle East, natural disasters in Mecca, and plans for rebuilding the Third Temple, align with prophecies from the Bible. Could these events be paving the way for God's return? Could the appearance of angels signify God's intervention during the Great Tribulation? Let's dive into this video to know the answer to these questions and understand more about these mysterious occurrences and their potential implications. In recent times, there have been many strange sightings in the sky. People are talking about these sightings, wondering if they are signs from God or if they are something else entirely. Some say they have seen clouds resembling angels, while others claim to have seen figures resembling extraterrestrial beings. One particularly noteworthy sighting was a large figure hovering in the sky, which some mistook for Jesus. These sightings have sparked a lot of debate and speculation. Some believe they are divine signs indicating something significant is about to happen. Others wonder if they could be the result of weather manipulation or even teleportation. People are discussing these sightings, trying to make sense of what they've seen. When people talk about these strange sightings, they often mention passages from the Bible. They point to verses like Matthew 24, 3, which talks about the signs of Jesus' return. According to this passage, there will be signs in the sky, and then the Son of Man will appear, coming on the clouds with power and great glory. Signs of Jesus' return. Many people wonder if these sightings could be signs of Jesus' return. They wonder if they are witnessing the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. The Bible talks about signs in the sky heralding Jesus' return, so it's natural for people to make that connection. The Bible speaks about warning signs, cautioning that those who ignore these signs will be in terror when Jesus Christ appears. However, for the faithful, there is a promise of redemption. As mentioned in Luke 21, 28, Jesus encourages believers to straighten up and raise their heads when these signs begin to take place, for their redemption is drawing near. For those who pay attention to these warnings, God promises a way of escape from His wrath. The Bible emphasizes the importance of being vigilant and aware of the signs indicating significant events. Delving into the Bible, let's explore what it says about angels and the signs of God's return. According to biblical teachings, angels are personal spiritual beings possessing intelligence, emotions, and will. This applies to both good and evil angels. While they lack true physical bodies, they are personalities capable of occasionally taking on physical forms. Despite their intelligence, angels have limited knowledge compared to God. They were created as a higher order of creatures than humans, inherently possessing greater knowledge. Their understanding is also enriched through observing human activities over an extended period, providing them with insights beyond human capabilities. Unlike humans, angels do not need to study the past. Their knowledge is acquired through direct observation, giving them a unique perspective on historical events. This distinctive characteristic sets them apart from humans in comprehending and interpreting the unfolding of God's plan. Angelic Knowledge and Predictions Angels, possessing intelligence and will, have the ability to predict human behavior with greater accuracy due to their long observation of human actions. While they have their own wills, angels are subject to the will of God. God dispatches good angels to assist believers. Also, angels and humans belong to entirely different orders of being. Contrary to some beliefs, human beings do not transform into angels after death, and angels never were nor will be human beings. 
Both were distinct creations of God. The Bible offers descriptions of angels appearing in glorious forms. For instance, Daniel's vision in chapter 10 describes Gabriel with a body like beryl, a face resembling lightning, eyes like torches of fire, and arms and feet like burnished bronze. The angel at Christ's tomb had a countenance like lightning and clothing as white as snow. Angels are not imaginary beings, but real entities created by God. Biblical accounts, such as those involving Abraham in Genesis 18 and 19, testify to the genuine existence of angels. These celestial beings can appear and disappear at will, proving their real and tangible nature. While angelic appearances were not common in biblical times, there is a growing interest in angels today. Reports of angelic encounters, though not frequent, are not uncommon. Often considered messengers, angels hold a significant role in various religions and continue to captivate human curiosity. Contemporary reports describe diverse forms of angelic visitations. Some encounters involve strangers mysteriously preventing harm before vanishing leaving behind a profound sense of peace and God's presence. In other instances, individuals glimpse winged or white-robed beings, experiencing a fleeting moment of divine presence. Witnesses often emerge from these encounters with a reassurance of God's existence, feeling a profound sense of peace. Despite these visitations' mysterious nature, they affirm a connection to the divine. Similar to the angelic choir that visited the shepherds in Luke 2.13, announcing Jesus' birth, some people report choir-like experiences in places of worship. Although these encounters may not convey specific news, they elicit a spiritual elation, providing comfort and a heightened sense of the sacred. Another type of angelic visitation involves physical sensations, such as feeling embraced by wings or arms. Elderly individuals, especially during moments of extreme loneliness, report these comforting sensations. Such encounters highlight God's role as the source of ultimate comfort, with scriptural references depicting God's protective wings. These varied angelic experiences reflect the continued involvement of God and angels in the world. Despite their mysterious nature, these encounters underscore the enduring belief in divine intervention and the comforting presence of celestial beings. As believers, we can find comfort in the assurance that angels continue to guard and protect God's people today. Just as they safeguarded individuals in the past, they remain vigilant in their role as guardians. The biblical admonition in Hebrews 13.2 reminds us to be hospitable to strangers, as we may unknowingly encounter angels in our midst. While angelic visitations may manifest in various forms, they often leave individuals with a sense of peace and assurance of God's presence. Some encounters involve physical sensations, such as feeling embraced by unseen arms during times of loneliness. These experiences serve as a reminder of God's comforting presence in our lives. While acknowledging the comforting presence of God's angels, it's essential to heed the warnings of Scripture regarding fallen angels aligned with Satan. These deceptive entities seek to undermine and destroy God's people, highlighting the importance of discernment and spiritual vigilance. Above all, we find solace in the promise of Jesus' enduring presence. Despite our challenges and trials, Jesus assures us of his constant companionship. His unwavering presence surpasses even that of angels, offering us strength and reassurance in every circumstance. In biblical prophecy, Jesus and the Apostle John foretold supernatural signs in the heavens, signaling the culmination of the end times. These signs, including the darkened sun, moon, falling stars, and celestial disturbances, are harbingers of the day of the Lord. They serve as divine warnings, 
heralding the fulfillment of God's ultimate plan for redemption and judgment. The Sixth Seal Unveiled Revelation 6, 12, 17 unveils the sixth seal, depicting a series of cataclysmic events. A great earthquake, the darkening of the sun, the reddening of the moon, and the falling of stars from the sky. These cosmic disturbances symbolize the impending wrath of God, as the sky recedes like a scroll and mountains and islands are displaced, humanity faces terror. People of all ranks, from kings to slaves, seek refuge in caves and rocks, pleading for protection from the divine judgment unleashed upon the earth. Throughout history, humanity has been captivated by celestial phenomena, often interpreting them as omens or divine messages. Eclipses and comets, once feared as harbingers of doom, have been demystified by modern science's understanding of their natural occurrences. In today's world, where the heavens have been charted and astronomical events predicted with precision, the fulfillment of biblical prophecies may require extraordinary celestial displays to capture humanity's attention. The awe-inspiring spectacles foretold by Christ could serve as unmistakable signs of divine intervention and impending judgment. Jesus' foretelling of supernatural heavenly signs resonates deeply with numerous prophecies from the Old Testament. The imagery of a darkened sun, falling stars, and a shaken sky would have evoked familiarity among his audience, as such events were recurrent themes in prophetic literature, echoes of Old Testament prophecies. Throughout the Old Testament, descriptions of cataclysmic events, often associated with the Day of the Lord, abound. Isaiah vividly portrays a day when human pride will be humbled, and only the exaltation of the Lord will remain. These prophecies warn of the consequences of human arrogance and the need for humility before God. Human pride, a pervasive barrier to a meaningful relationship with God, often leads to suffering and strife. God may need to shake humanity out of its complacency and self-reliance to break through this barrier. The upheaval caused by divine intervention serves as a wake-up call, reminding humanity of its vulnerability and the necessity of humility before God. The shaking of the heavens and the earth serves as a means to humble humanity and redirect its focus towards God. In the midst of upheaval and cosmic signs, people will come face to face with the worthlessness of their idols. This goes beyond mere physical idols and encompasses modern pursuits such as greed and covetousness. The Apostle Paul draws parallels between ancient idols and our contemporary fixation on possessions, entertainment, and luxuries. Our insatiable desire for material wealth, symbolized by cars, entertainment centers, and various indulgences, mirrors the idolatry condemned in biblical teachings. The impending upheaval will expose the futility of this pursuit highlighting the emptiness of accumulating possessions for their own sake. Isaiah vividly paints the day of the Lord as a time of reckoning, marked by divine wrath and fierce anger. The celestial bodies themselves play a role in this cosmic drama, with the stars, constellations, sun, and moon losing their luminance. The prophet foresees a punishment for the world's evil and a humbling of the arrogant and ruthless. In his prophecy and lamentation for the Pharaoh in Egypt, Ezekiel echoes the theme of heavenly signs. The darkening of stars, sun, and moon reappears, emphasizing a divine response to arrogance and sin. These celestial disturbances serve as both warnings and manifestations of God's judgment on those who defy His will. In the face of impending celestial turmoil, the message is clear. Reflect on the transient nature of worldly pursuits, turn away from idolatry, and humble oneself before the Creator. 
The darkness mentioned in prophetic texts, such as the Ninth Plague in Egypt during the time of the Exodus, symbolizes a divine intervention to soften the hardened hearts of humanity. Just as darkness descended upon Egypt, signaling a reckoning with sin and oppression, so too will darkness play a role in the end times, shaking the world from its complacency under Satan's influence. The celestial signs, including the darkening of the sun and moon, serve a crucial purpose in preparing the world for Christ's return and the establishment of his kingdom. God, in his love, seeks to awaken humanity to its sins, including pride, idolatry, and greed, prompting repentance and reconciliation. Understanding the wrath of the Lamb, the concept of the wrath of the Lamb in Revelation may seem perplexing as it juxtaposes the gentle image of a lamb with the idea of wrath. However, this imagery underscores the seriousness of divine judgment. The lamb representing Jesus Christ embodies both love and justice. The cry for the mountains and rocks to fall on them reflects humanity's terror in the face of divine judgment. The opening of the fifth seal in Revelation depicts the cries of martyred saints who suffered persecution for their faith. Their plea for justice highlights the reality of persecution and the longing for God's righteous judgment. In Revelation 6.1, the martyred saints cry out for God's judgment on the earth, echoing a longing for justice against evil and oppression. God's anger, though righteous, is tempered with love and truth. His judgment is motivated by a desire to address the perversion and depravity that plague the world. Jesus, in Matthew 24, 37 to 39, draws a parallel between the end times and the days of Noah. In Noah's era, humanity had sunk into profound wickedness, characterized by pervasive evil and corruption. The Lord observed the depths of human depravity, prompting sorrow in his heart. During Noah's time, moral degradation deepened with each passing generation, culminating in a society consumed by evil thoughts and actions. Despite warnings and signs, people continued in their sinful ways, oblivious to the impending judgment. Witnessing humanity's relentless descent into sin, God experienced sorrow and regret for creating mankind. The flood, a cataclysmic judgment, was a response to humanity's unrepentant wickedness, highlighting the consequences of persistent rebellion against God. God, as our Creator and Father, is constantly grieved to witness His children self-destruct. However, at critical junctures in history, His grief transforms into righteous anger, prompting him to take decisive action. His love, balanced with controlled power, demands interventions that express tough love when necessary. Throughout history, God's tough love has manifested in actions such as the flood during Noah's era and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. These events underscore God's commitment to addressing rampant sin and evil through necessary measures. Sin antithetical to God's nature, has caused profound suffering and evil in the world. God's actions aim to counteract these consequences and guide humanity back to righteousness. The eradication of sin is crucial for establishing God's kingdom, where true peace and happiness prevail and all traces of sorrow and suffering are comforted. The urgency of watching and faithfulness. Revelation, especially in chapter 16, emphasizes the urgency of vigilance and faithfulness. The impending seven plagues before Christ's second coming require believers to watch and maintain spiritual garments, symbolizing faithfulness. The metaphor of coming as a thief underscores the unexpected nature of these events, urging readiness. God's interventions, though stern, aim at ushering in a sin-free kingdom where His ways reign supreme. The call to watch and remain faithful serves as a beacon of hope, 
signaling the eventual establishment of a kingdom marked by genuine peace and eternal joy. In Revelation, those who remain spiritually faithful are depicted as wearing white robes, symbolizing purity through the cleansing power of Jesus Christ's blood. This imagery emphasizes the significance of maintaining spiritual vigilance amidst the tumultuous events of the end times. When Christ speaks of being blessed for watching, Revelation 16, 15, it extends beyond merely observing celestial signs. It encompasses staying attuned to global events and, most importantly, guarding against religious deception. The return of Jesus will occur suddenly and unexpectedly, akin to a thief in the night. While we may have limited control over worldly affairs, we can prepare spiritually by aligning our beliefs with biblical teachings. This requires introspection and a keen awareness of our spiritual state. By adhering to Jesus' command to watch, we equip ourselves against spiritual deception. Jesus' directive to watch is a command and an invitation to personal vigilance. By scrutinizing our beliefs and actions in light of Scripture, we fulfill Jesus' mandate and fortify ourselves against deception. In the book of Revelation, Christ unveils the impending seven plagues preceding His second coming. Revelation 16.15 echoes a call to vigilance, likening His arrival to that of a thief. This admonition emphasizes the importance of spiritual awareness amidst the imminent events. Throughout Revelation, garments symbolize spiritual fidelity. Those who remain steadfast are depicted wearing white robes, signifying purity obtained through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. This imagery underscores the significance of spiritual vigilance in preparing for Christ's return. Angel's Role in Christ's return. Scripture foretells the participation of angels in Christ's glorious return. Matthew 25, 31 elucidates that not only will angels witness this momentous event, but they will also actively participate. Their presence signifies the culmination of every believer's hope, the triumphant return of Jesus Christ. For true believers, the return of Jesus Christ represents the ultimate fulfillment of faith. It is a moment eagerly anticipated, a divine reunion with the Savior. As Christ's return draws near, the faithful are urged to remain watchful, adorned with the garments of spiritual fidelity and ready for His imminent arrival. In Revelation 5, the celestial scene unfolds with clarity. The angels, presently encircling the throne of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, are engaged in ceaseless worship. Their resounding chorus declares, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, acknowledging His supremacy in power, riches, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. The question arises, where are the angels right now? The unequivocal answer is that they reside in the heavenly realms, continually adoring and submitting to Jesus Christ. Their worship is a manifestation of unwavering devotion to the epicenter of their affection, Jesus. James 4.14 prompts reflection on our understanding of reality. While angels grasp the eternal perspective, we lack certainty about tomorrow in our transient existence. The metaphorical reminder portrays human life as fleeting, akin to a mist that appears briefly and then vanishes. In the grand scheme of eternity, our earthly existence is but a fleeting moment, a mere vapor that vanishes in the vast expanse of time. Yet despite this temporal reality, we often invest our precious years in pursuits that tether us to the transient. Reflect on our tendencies. We elevate our careers, wealth, relationships, and pleasures to the status of idols, offering them our devoted worship. But consider the angels. They perceive the true nature of reality. They have borne witness to the unfolding saga of Jesus Christ, comprehending the depths of His divine plan. And in response, 
they bow down in adoration, making Christ the focal point of their existence. To emulate the celestial choir, we must prioritize Christ in our lives. Our worship is demonstrated through acceptance of His gift of salvation, resisting the allure of worldly temptations and offering our best to Him. It involves surrendering our will to His divine purpose, echoing the words, Not my will, but yours be done. Let us join the heavenly chorus in adoration of Christ the Lord. May our lives resonate with the melody of worship as we acknowledge His sovereignty and dedicate ourselves to His service. In adoration and obedience, let us exclaim, O oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. So what do you think of the strange things seen in the sky of Israel? Comment below and subscribe for more. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.